Good evening, YouTube, Booktube. This is Johnny. I know it's only been maybe seven, eight hours since my last video, but like I said this morning, I need to start showing you guys the used books that I have accumulated the la last week. And I wanted to start with the books I got at the library used bookstore, The Book Nook. Uh, I go there tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. I, as you all guys know, I repeat myself. I volunteer on Mondays from 10 in the morning to 1 in the afternoons. On Friday mornings from 10 to 1. And I've been volunteering at the Book Nook going on 11 years. I used to do it on Saturdays and Wednesdays. And then I just did it on Saturdays. And now I do it on Mondays and Fridays. And... Sometimes I uh, take over shifts if somebody has to do something on their shift and I become a substitute, but I haven't done that in a while. So, uh, first of all, it is a Sunday night here in West Michigan. It is 6.32 at night. It is August the 11th. Uh, my wife went to church this evening and I'm here. Just took my daily hot shower got the fan going, got some water, and yeah, so here we go. So, first of all, I ended on page 716 this evening. Tomorrow is August the 12th. It'll be a Monday. First of all, I should mention what I've been reading well, I got a book Friday at the Book Nook. Cost me 50 cents. And this is a book that is really, it's a landmark book on uh, bohemianism in America. And I was really pleased that it came into the Book Nook. I got for 50 cents. I saw it in the back laying there and I told Mary, who runs the Book Nook, can I buy that? Because I knew what it was. It was a very, in my to me, it's a very important book if you're into bohemianism. And she said, yeah, I'll sell it to you for 50 cents. I said, sure. You can get it online. You can get it from Amazon probably for a couple of dollars. But it's called Garrett, Garrett's and Pretenders, A History of Bohemianism in America by Albert Perry. This book was first published in 1933. The, he, at that time, Albert Perry was a young Young guy, he lived in Washington Square in New York City. He wasn't a bohemian, but he was a worked for a newspaper. But he would run into these bohemians who lived in Grimmage Village in New York, and he would talk to them and get stories. And he wrote about him and submitted articles. And and then he was asked to write a book. This book in 1933. It was published, but it didn't really sell. You had the Great Depression. You had the, the New Deal with Roosevelt, President Roosevelt. And then years, years went by, but this book became like a, a, a reference book for understanding bohemianism in America. It became like the, one of the books that you had to refer to if you were a scholar. And it was then reprinted in 1960 in an original text with an edition of... Now, he didn't write the edition. He asked, he asked a friend of his who was an academic, who was an authority on the life and writings of D.H. Lawrence. And he asked him to do the uh, section on the Beatniks. Grimmage Village Revisit 1948 and then it has a chapter called Chapter 30 Interbeatniks The Boheme of 1960 by Harry T. Moore So I was really pleased to have this I got some books out on the Grimmage Village and the Bohemians and this is another one that's kind of famous The Improper Bohemians Grimmage Village in its heyday by Alan Churchill. This was first published in... This was published... 
1959. And then I showed you this book I, I read, I think Latin, I read the whole book, <laughs> which is rare for me. I read this, this came out in 2013, The Village, A History of Greenwich Village, 400 Years of Beats, Bohemians, Radicals, and Rogues by John Strassen Barg. I highly recommend this. I really enjoyed reading this. And then there's the book uh, Among the Bohemians Experiments in Living 1900 to 1936 by Virginia Nicholson. This is a wonderful book. <laughs> I reread it and get it out all the time. It's really a great book. And then there is uh, the Greenwich Village Reader Fiction, Poetry, and Reminiscences, 1872 to 2002. This is edited by June Skinner Sawyers. Of course, one of the great Bohemians is Oscar Wilde. This is a biography of him, published by this is by Julian Philippi Philippi Philippia no, Phil Phil I can't pronounce it. Philippe Julian, and of course another famous book is Children of the Sun, a, Na a Narrative of Decadence in England after 1918 by Martin Green. I was reading this last year. Uh, I got it at some used book sale. So, uh, but I really like this, Among the Bohemians, Experiments in Living 1900 to 1939 by Virginia Nicholson. So I also been reading, this is a book I got at the Friday News book sale. I collect the writings of Thomas Robbins. I didn't have this one. Another roadside attraction by Tom Robinson. He's very famous for his novel, Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. It's, uh, so I was reading this the last couple days when not reading my Christian books. Uh, so, yeah. Also, I was reading today, this is another book I forgot, The Bohemians, Mark Twain, and San Francisco Writers Who Reinvented American Literature by Penn, Ben Turner. I read this last year or the year before. Also, I've been reading the McSweeney's uh, Literary Journal. This is, I got this at the Friday Library use, no, at the Friday A A W. They're in South Haven, used book sale. This is issue number 12, published in 2003. I've been reading the short stories in this. Now these are the books I got at the Book Nook Friday and maybe Monday. This is Churchill and Orwell, The Fight for Freedom. I had this in paperback, which I gave to our older son, Caleb, tonight. They stopped by for a visit. But this is by Thomas E. Ricks. I got this in hardback now. I had a paperback. Then I picked up at the book nook. These are the engravings of William Blake's engravings, edited in an introduction by Jeffrey Keyes. Uh, William Blake was a very famous engraver and poet of the Romantic era. And these are his engravings. They're all very famous. You've all seen them if you're into William Blake. I, I collect books on William Blake, Blake, his writings, biographies. So I got that. It's kind of old, but it's, I really, and I really love the engravings from this book. Yeah, I, I really like the engravings of William Blake. So I got that. Then I picked up, this is by uh, Edward Strachan. He was a very uh, turn of the century American photographer. He did for Vogue and uh, Vanity Fair and he was uh, a, foremost, a foremost pioneer of American photography. And this is his book, uh, A Life in Photography by Edward Stratton. If you're really into the history of American Photography, his name always comes up. And 
so I, was, I got this for two dollars and so I was really pleased to get this because I like looking at uh, the history of early American photography so here's a picture of Gloria, Gloria Swanson right there and um, they're all black and white but there's a uh, there's a lot of drama in the in the photos. And let's see what else I can find in here. Oh, here's a picture of Jacob Epstein, a very famous artist. And uh, I don't know what else you can find in here. Anyway, I was really pleased to find it. Here's a uh, Greta Garbo. So anyway, I found that. Then I found this book. You know, I collect books on the New Yorker. Wonderful Town, New York Stories from New Yorker. Edited by David Remick. Now, sometimes people ask me, well, how do you know what books to collect when you go to a used book sale? Or you go to a thrift store. You look for writers that are were in the New Yorker. Like, uh, oh, you look at the stories here, who they're by. John Cheever, Ann Beatty, Edwin Shaw, uh, John O'Hare, Peter Taylor, Philip Roth, uh, Frank Con Con Conroy, James Thurber, uh, uh, Susan Santang, uh, who else here? Jean Stanford, William Maxwell, E.B. White, Elizabeth Hardwork, Saul Billows, S.J. Perlman. That's who I. That's how I look at these names in the New Yorker, and then I go looking for their books when I go to a thrift store, when I go to used book sale. And then I picked up this novel. I never heard of this writer. This is by Molly Prentice. It's called Tuesday Night in 1980. Now I looked at this novel a couple of times at the book nook and wasn't sure about it. But I was kind of interested in the subject matter. It says here in the back of this novel, Welcome to Soho at the a out onset of the 80s. Gritty, quickly gentrifying playground for artists and writers looking to make it, big, make it in the big city. Among them, James Bennett, a syn synthetic art critic for the New York Times who's unlikely condition enables him to describe art in profound and magical ways. Ro uh, Roel Egales, an exile Argentina painter running from his past and the dirty war that has enveloped his country. As the two men ascend in the downtown art scenes, dual tragedies strike and each is faced with a loss that acutely affects his relationship to life and to art. It is not until they are inadvertently brought together by Lucy Olsen's son, a small town beauty and rogue's muse, and a young orphan boy set, set mysteriously from Buenos Aires that James and Rule are unable to rediscover some semblance of what they've lost. Well, one thing, I, I was reading through this novel and I liked the descriptions of the art scene and of the music scene in the 80s in New York City. It was very, uh, very... It was just really interesting how she described the art scene and what was going on there in New York City in the 1980s in the art scene. So that's why I got it. And then I picked up Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrug. I had this in paperback. I found a nice hardback edition. And then I picked up this book, the last book. I picked up the book book. This is Munch and Women, Image and Myth. I collect... He, I collect books on Edvard Munch. He's very famous for his painting The Screen. And I uh, so I got that to go with my Munch collection. This book. It's just uh, him on women paintings and this was published by the Art Service International, Argent Alexandra, Virginia, 1997. This is a biography of 
Edvard Munch, Behind the Screen by Sue Penrix. She just came out with a biography of Nietzsche that I got last year. So those are the books that I got at the book nook. I can put these down the lower level now, find a place for them, which will be kind of difficult. It's getting kind of crowded down there again. I'm stacking stuff on the floor again. And uh, But I've been reading The Bohemians, Mark Twain, and San Francisco writers who reinvented American. I read a great deal of this. I'm just kind of rereading it, sections of it tonight. And I'm reading America, Another Roadside Attraction by Tom Robbins. Reading Garriott's and Pretenders, A History of Bohemianism in America by Albert Perry. And uh, so that's what I'm reading. That's what I got for our our library, our book collection. Now you have to remember, uh, you know, I'm not one of the intellectual elite. When I was working for 15 years, I was a farm laborer. I unloaded farm trucks with eggs. That's what I did after I got out of seminary and did my internship. I came up here when I was, we moved up up here in my early 40s. I didn't know what to do. There was no church. There was no pastorate ministry. I had no job skills. I didn't believe in working on Sunday at that time. And I had to get a job. I couldn't just sit around the house and let my wife support us. So I went out looking for a job. And the first job that was offered to me was working in Hamilton, Michigan, down the road in an egg processing plant. And I unloaded trucks. And then I worked on an egg processing plant until I got fired June the, June the 21st, 2007 which you can read about in my online diary, Crooked Fingers, if you're really curious. But, you know, I've, held, I've had other jobs. I mean, I've done janitorial work. Uh, when I was in high school, I worked at a drag strip on, on the weekends. Uh, I've done office manager. I've, do, I've done substitute teaching in elementary schools. I have... Uh, what else have I done? I've worked at a cannery. I've picked apples. I, uh, I don't know what else I've done. I've worked in a rescue mission. I was a volunteer, but I had to do, I had to do chores. I was a, uh, when I mentioned I, I volunteered and I lived at the Richmond Rescue Mission, the first couple of years I was a cook. I cooked for about 200 people in the mornings and in the evenings. I did that for a couple of years. When I was in, in college up on Mackinac Island, in my early 20s, I worked in the kitchen and I also was a waiter <laughs> for this. Uh, I had to serve the meals. Back when I was in Mackinac Island Liberal Arts College, when you went, everybody had to, the dress code was in college at that time, suit and tie and shirts, dress shirts. And so when you had dinner at night, it was very formal. And I was a waiter. I, so when I was in Mackinac Island, I had to pay my way. I didn't have any money. So I, I did dishes and I waited. I was a waiter. So I did that. So, so now I am 67, well, I will be 67 years old, August the 14th, I'm retired. I read, I write, I wait for the second coming of Christ. I seek to live for the glory of God and to enjoy Him forever. So hopefully I'll get to the Friday used book sale that we went to in South Haven. We'll wait and see. So once again, I'll sign off. Hope you all had a good weekend. Have a good new week. Until next time, bye.